So we've had many of you beautiful people submit your Dynasty trades via our Discord. The link to join that is free and down below, and that's where we'll be taking a lot of uh, trades from you, which we will be discussing in today's video. So welcome back to the BDG Dynasty channel. As always, this is Adam, and this is Andrew. Make sure you subscribe to their individual YouTube channel so you have maximum Dynasty content coming into your Face hole. We're not going to sit here and yap for too long. I just want to get right into it. So, bring up this first trade from the Discord. We have two sides. RJB, Prod, sends the 102, a 25 second, and a 26 second for Jameer Gibbs, a fourth, a 25 first, 24 second. This is a lot going on here. It is a lot going That's on. That's why I picked it. Do we have context for if it's super flex, if it's, do we have context to it? <laughs> Because that'll change my opinion I th- I th- a lot. I, th- I don't think that actually was context, and I say we grade it from the super flex lens and then go one quarterback if you want to change okay. it. Okay. I think from a super flex lens... Why don't we step back? Because this is like way too you. much to just Thank throw you. at like a screen and, right. and say like <clears throat> win or loss. I, I agree. You have, you have, these, are, these type trades, it's interesting you start with this. I think when you get a trade like this, the most important thing to do is try to break it down in pieces to try to match up, and then you can start assessing it. Don't try to just take it as one big package before you can really – Young Buck's trying to get running before he's crawling. So how would you you go about (coughs) breaking it down? I think of startup values for this, right? And we just looked at startup values in a previous video. So Gibbs was going just below the 102 in that that startup. So I think right now you could argue, though, that uh, Gibbs is a slight loss, but they're comparable enough to kind of cross them and just – Right, so we can go to South Harmon – ff.com forward slash ADP and that is synced with sleeper which has like 150 dynasty startup drafts in the books already Mm -hmm. and basically what he's saying and what he's suggesting is like on that draft board they have rookie picks because we don't have the rookies in place yet so people will do drafts as if they're doing you know they're drafting the 102 or whatever and then we can start to actually put names to the trades that are going on here so rather than being like 102 202 25 second whatever Let's let's put you know the one hundred two next to Jameer Gibbs, or let's put the one hundred two as like Drake May or whatever, and it becomes way more clear that way. Facts, exactly. And, and and if you just kind of put those to the side or cross them off, then you start looking at the trade. Okay, all of a sudden it's a little tougher to grade because you're saying, would you rather have a twenty five first or a twenty five second or a twenty six second? Not close. You want the first. Right. And keep in mind you're throwing in that twenty four <laughs> second round pick as well. Yeah, because you got the twenty four two twelve. If you wanted to cancel out or even say you'd rather have the twenty five second because it could be later. Uh, a better pick later. Like, I'd cancel all those out. And I think when you just start to break it down, you could say you want the Gibbs side. I think if you got the 102 side, you're doing it with an effort to go pay up for Marvin Harrison or to go get your quarterback out of a running back spot. So, right. in, like, total value, I think the dynasty value lends itself to the Gibbs side. But if you were needing a quarterback, this is really not that bad of a price to go get it. Yeah. I agree. What What <laughs> side would you – want if one, you were making this trade. one other thing I, I think you also could do <laughs> yeah is start to here, here's the thing like the the average dynasty player is not going to know the 2025 class I don't know the 2025 class and I consider myself probably an above average player I definitely don't know the 2026 class so at this point what you could do is start to play like the spectrum game and put names to those picks in terms of like this previous class right so you could put like all right 2025 first you know, if you have a, a feel for how RJB's team is going to be, if they're like a middle-of-the-pack team or whatever, maybe you say like, okay, that is a, a, a Zay Flowers or that is yeah. a, you know, what I mean, like a, a middle-tier player and then start putting names that way and then see how you look at that after that. The the, uh, the one thing, too, I think when you start really like dissecting the uh, intricate details of trades like this is I start looking at names and I see that there's a the 25 first is from an owner that's not a part of this trade. So, for example, if I'm Luke Leon or Mm -hmm. Leon, whatever, if I'm like, hey, this greener team is really not very good, I kind of want to bet against this person, Mm -hmm. I could definitely understand why you're trying to go get that in a leverage piece. Like, um, that's something to keep in mind, too. That 25 first is not a part of the the people being traded here. Yep, and I wouldn't go, like, crazy trying to predict where teams are going to end. I think you have a a good feel for, like, teams that are rebuilding, obviously, super clear, but there are a lot of uh, teams that are on the brink of, like, two players will make or break their season. So if, like, these two guys break out, they just went from eighth place to, like, fourth place. If these two guys don't don't break out, they went from fourth place to eighth place. So trying to be like, yeah, I'm getting the one-on-three in this, probably not going to be able to nail that. So I wouldn't overvalue yeah. knowing where the person's going to finish. Yeah, yeah I, definitely I, don't overdo it. Agreed. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, and I was just – I mean, I'm just looking at it. And, I mean, you pick your poison, whatever you want, whatever you need. You know that one-on-two, like you said. Maybe you value the wide receiver a little bit more than the running back in Jameer Gibbs. 
I think ultimately, like you said, though, Adam, when it comes down to it, you're looking at those two seconds and you're getting the first to second and stuff on the other side. There probably is a little bit more value down there. Mm -hmm. So if you're going from that value standpoint, sure, maybe you take that side. But if you're the guy at 102 and you are really trying to take a shot in a super flex league at, you know, a Drake May or something like that, or maybe you just want Marvin Harrison, I don't see why that's a bad move for you. That could be a good move for you still either way. I like that one on the side. For sure. Yeah, I, I mean – Dude, to be honest, like if you if you needed a quarterback or you're like, I really think Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to set the, the like league on fire, this isn't a bad price to pay. The one thing to keep in mind for the bottom side too, if you di- if you did have the ability to like forego quarterbacks if you're set there and you didn't need to get like crazy at wide receiver, you now have that 25 first to kind of push in the mix um, later on in the season too. Yep. So there's there's definitely the depth piece on the bottom, but like to be honest, if you if you, this was your price of like if that ended up being Caleb Williams, I mean dude, you could end up paying a lot more for a Caleb Williams right. type player. And the, sure. the good thing about having all the picks, too, is that you get to remain liquid throughout the offseason, right? Yep. Like, you're not tying yourself to any asset other than an asset that's going to increase in value throughout the rest of this offseason. Yep. Yep. All right, so next trade up, this is trade of yours. Trade of yours versus Mr. MPH36. So you are getting Jameer Gibbs and Demario Douglas. You gave up a 24 first, which you wrote in as the 108. Yep. You gave up the 202. And then two fourths, which are basically really Bro, nothing. Toss them in yep. at this point. Uh, give us a little context behind the scoring. So yeah, so this is um, a best ball league. It's start twelve. Um, it the the scoring is point two points per carry, and it's half PPR. So um, when you think of that context, the running back actually is juiced a lot more than in a, a typical league because it's a half PPR for receivers and half PPR for running backs. But the point two points per carry for the running backs mm. makes that um, a pretty valuable position so like that's one thing to know your league right some scoring settings are different so this th- in this league running backs are um I-, I value them higher than I would in a lot of typical leagues. so I was pushing in right before the playoff started uh, this is one of the leagues that has deadlines so Nick and you know Andrew would love this league um <laughs> so I had to do this beforehand and I sent the 108 I didn't know what it was going to be as a playoff first at the did time. you have a good idea I mean I knew he was a wild card team he didn't have a bye mm-hmm. and I, I mean it, he definitely could have won the wild card matchup and could have lost. So I, yeah. I was valuing it 107 to like 110. Right? Okay. So I sent that and I knew that 202 was the 202 at the time. So I was valuing it kind of as a too late first, right? Almost as it, as it actually is. I mean, that's how you're viewing it from the start. Yeah. So I, and I, I know it wasn't like cheap, but um, at the time, I know running backs are hard to acquire in this league. Mm-hmm. And to me, Gibbs was going to set me up to go win a title. I ultimately did not end up doing that, but. Um, I mean, I, I still don't hate this trade, honestly, at the, at the end of the day. No, I mean, I'm looking at it, and, and you saying you know that it wasn't necessarily cheap. I also don't feel like you paid an arm and a leg either. I, I Honestly, I'm making the move for Gibbs, same as you did here, if it's my team. Yeah, I think that's super fair, like straight up, because, I mean, the 108 is not a super heavy price to pre- pay. And you look back at Gibbs, if you're redrafting last year, again, right now, Gibbs is – what top four? Way spots higher than top one five. Of yeah, probably yeah. top five at worst. He definitely so inside the top six, even if you like heavily valued receivers. Yep. Like so I think you're, I think you're pretty much winning on that, and then you're paying a little bit of juice because I mean he's ranked above the one hundred eight, so the two hundred two is obviously a little bit extra. Mario Douglas showed that he's like a pretty good player. Sneaky ad for you to throw Douglas in there, I think. Sneaky, sneaky ad. In in a best ball format, especially like having Mario Douglas pop Douglas types are is big. You want as many of those. He may do nothing for you for every yeah. week, but he gives you one week in the playoffs, and that's all you need. Especially so. with the lack of wide receiver talent in New England and the chance at a quarterback upgrade. If they go a new quarterback, sneaky. yeah, you got yourself yeah, probably that, like a nice little low-end yeah. wide receiver three or something. something. And I, I think with Gibbs, like, I think the reality was that MPH is rebuilding. Um, not that you wouldn't want to have Gibbs on a rebuild, but he's trying to multiply assets. He wasn't going to probably get two firsts, and I thought this was the closest thing I could get to two firsts with how it ultimately got done. Let so. me ask Fair you, what, do you how, what are your guys' feelings on, like, fourth-round picks being thrown into trades? I'd almost just be like, stop. Don't. You, you can have all of them if you want. I don't That's what shit. I'm saying. Like, it almost just, like, I think people – You think it pollutes the deal? I think people put them in there to make it look like they're giving you more, where in my mind I'm like, these are ju- you're just clogging my fucking roster. No, I agree, but it actually works, though. Like, you throw four or five – on For you. fourth and fifth round picks into a deal, you throw them in there, and people are all of a sudden are like, oh, I'm getting all these extra picks. I guess. That shit just pisses me off. It, I understand it, but it's, it is a tactic that works. pissing me off right now. Do, do You're making me mad. No, I, you. <laughs> no, you. It's a lot of anger, hostility. I'm <laughs> in the middle of this shit. No, I think 
The only thing I, I tend to agree. I, I, I like to be the one that has them. You guys get to throw them in. You, I tend to once. agree. Fucking sending out seven fourth round picks in his trays. But the reason I actually like to have them, though, is because, like, in, the, in a draft, let's say, right? Let's say I have these two fours and someone is snuck through into the third round that I don't think should be there. Like, sometimes you have those in that range. Someone might take a couple extra fours to let you move up. So yeah. it's like. It's it, overall, they, they feel though, in, in a trade like this, it does not move the needle. It's a little sprinkle, man. They feel more th- in theory than practice. Like Everyone's yeah. like, oh, you could trade two fourths for like a third. Like, no, you can't. No one's fucking no. doing it. The fourths are almost basically worthless. Though, you, I don't know. If you feel strongly about a player, cool. You get your guy. It is what I'm it. saying is, like, let's say you're sitting at the 303 and you don't really love anyone on the board. And let's say I'm at the 312. If I add those two fourths in, you might be like, all right, maybe I'll take the, yeah. the package, right? Yeah, maybe. And I think, I think really the To the point you're making, I get it, though. The time you're going to find the most success with these is you're in the rookie draft. Somebody's sliding a little bit that somebody's high on. They want to go get their guy. You're like, hey, come take this fourth. I'll take this from you next year. Yeah, I, my better. overall point is like you're looking at this trade and it looks like a lot because the extra fourths are in there. But like this trade is exactly the same in my mind if you just take those fourths out too. Yeah, yeah. No difference. Mentally remove them. Yeah. I think too, in a trade of this magnitude where there's firsts and seconds and like premier players, they should not be needle movers. If it's like – you know, a Tucker Craft types and these guys that are in third, fourth round range, okay, maybe it's a different story. But in trades of this magnitude, I don't think they should move the needle, but I include them because sometimes they do. I kind of feel like no, like when when it is trades of this magnitude, when there's firsts involved, when there's Jameer Gibbs types involved, like the needle movers minimum are like second rounders for me. Agreed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the, those need to be involved in order for me to like get over to the hump and, and probably above yeah. that. A let little me, bit. So then to that point, let me ask you, let's say you were entertaining taking that side. What's what that? would those, the, uh, the 202 and the 108, yeah. what would those force need to be removed for? Like, if that was a second, would you be willing to a third? Or, like, what would it need to be to add and remove those force and add in for you to take to the To me, deal? the thirds don't even move the needle. Like, I don't even care about thirds that much. No, right? I'm not saying this right or wrong answer. I'm just asking. Not, uh, okay, so I'm taking the pick side. Yes. And I would need something added on top of that. Right. Like, yeah, I, w- I would probably like another, like, late second. So, if, if there was, like, a 212 instead of those two fours, you'd do the deal? Yeah, I think so. I what think are, that What makes if sense. it's, like, any 2025 20, second? Any of them. You don't yeah, know. Seconds are cool by me. Yeah, cool. And, I like that. And to that point, by the way, I think that's a big thing that if you are new to Dynasty, you may not realize that the difference between the 212 and the four and a rookie pick is significant. Huge. Yeah. And that's where sometimes, like, understanding that, you, sometimes you have to get burnt and get too forced to realize, like, I don't want any of these players and One they the don't time, pan out. Because you'll get to it and your roster is already deep and you'll be, like, in the rookie draft with – this guy probably has nine picks in this rookie draft if he's going yeah. down this route right Correct. now. Correct. You he don't does. even get to use those fourth-round picks. You have to yep. start cutting guys. Right. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, you literally don't use them. Yeah. You're, like, you're fake – you're getting fake yeah. shit right now. Or you're cutting, like, actual guys on your bench right now just to roster them just for the sake of making the pick and it yeah. doesn't even matter. Yeah, it's so fucking stupid. Next trade. All right. We've got, ooh, this is a banger right now. Sam Laporta (laughs) straight up for Trey McBride, a second and a third in 2025. I don't care the format. I don't care the scoring settings. I don't care any of it. There's a single side I want in this trade every single time. It's McBride. I want the Laporta side. Stop the cap. I want the Laporta (laughs) side. How? Now, I I would change my mind. I would change my mind a little bit if I knew that A. Serrera or whatever his name is was going to finish very low. Like, if I knew he was going to be an early second next year, it might change my name. draft picks should have absolutely nothing to do with it. Why? Because this is the same tier player in a trade. See, but that's where I differ. You I don't have, think Trey McBride I have, is the same tier as Laporta? No, I have, I have Sam Laporta as an S-tier tight end. I have Trey McBride as the number one guy as my A-tier tight end. So I do have a, a tier break between so the two. So a second and third is not enough to get him into that tier? He's saying Not no. to me. Not to me. He's unless saying, it's early. He's if saying unless early, that's locked in like 202. If right? it's early, we can really, you know, debate it. But I think for me right now, I just rather would take Laporta. Okay. Let me ask you this, though. But I don't think there's a wrong answer for which one you take here. Well, I do. I do. But what, Fair enough. And what there's reason? No, so, you. Listen, you, you're on trial right now. You have to answer for your crimes. What, why is Sam Laporta for you in a different tier than Trey McBride? What, what differentiator is that? I think I like the situation better in Detroit. I think that there's... A real chance. And, again, this all gets into projection. I think there's a chance that they add Marvin Harrison Jr., they add somebody like that. Do you see the same target share that we were seeing out of uh, Trey McBride next year if that is the case? I don't know. Yes. I think, if anything, you could argue right now they don't have an alpha receiver that could open it up more for McBride in the middle. You would think that if they add Marvin Harrison, Trey McBride gets targeted more than he did this year? And he had better quality of target. I don't – 
disagree with quality, but I think target share is something that we should I take into account. I would account. probably disagree, but <laughs> I would say, like, the connection that Kyler and McBride had was real, especially down by the red zone. Like, if McBride scored nine touchdowns next year, that wouldn't <laughs> surprise me whatsoever. If he went up from that, love McBride here. He's my number one in Dynasty. I know that'll be, like, a hot take, but, like, rankings change fucking every two yeah. weeks. Like Laporte is my number one in Dynasty. Sure. I, so, yeah. Laporte is my number one. Trey, Trey McBride is my number two, and I have them in the same tier. So, here's the other big thing. All right, let, let's say, and I do have it one and two. So, if you tell me straight up who do I want, I, I'll take Laporte. But the reality is in tiers. I think this is something to consider when you look at rankings or you think about players and tiering them. So, if I say they're in the same tier, if I, if I have one or the other and you send me the other person straight up, like, let's say I have Trey McBride. Although he's my second, if he's in the same tier, you send me Laporta, I'm not making that trade one for one. It's a lateral tier trade. But if you give me either side that has the picks, I'm taking the extra picks. Yeah. Do you know where both of these guys were drafted in rookie drafts? In, in tight end premium leagues? Well, I know from experience, last year, getting a couple shares of Laporta, I was taking him late seconds, early thirds. So second round. So I'm not only getting a chance to re-roll for a uh, Laporta type in value, I get a third. Plus, I get the same type of a tier player in Trey McBride. I hear you, but again, you're talking about the chance of re-rolling. We've talked about hit rates of second round right, picks. Right, but, but you're not just getting chances to re-roll. You're also, like, you're getting you're McBride getting the guy and then back. the chance. Yeah, like, you saw it. what I did with the force in that trade prior to this, right? Yeah. Like, I can use that second for a much different grease piece than those fours. Yeah. And I don't the third. I don't even care about the third. The third is irrelevant to me. It's just the second McBride for Laporta. And I think just what it comes down to to me is I have Laporta as number one. McBride for me is number three, so I, I'm just willing Who's to. Who's two? If I had to ask, Hawk? I can't remember off the top of my head. Who? Hawk. Yes, Hawk. Hawkinson is number two for me. Yes, and so. Well, we'll talk about that another day. Yeah, and and I get under. I understand too if you're not like all in on Hawk because of the ACL tear right now, but at the end of the day, like to me, <clears throat> even then, like we were talking about trades and and picks and stuff like that, like. If that's a late second, a late second doesn't necessarily do much to throw me over the top. But he here's the thing about the trade like this, right? What is the difference, do you really think, in your team with having McBride in that tight end slot versus Sam Laporta? Like, do you actually think that helps your team at all? Having – Like, Laporta, you think, you think your I, team's I that think much better by having Sam Laporta in the tight end versus Trey McBride? Not a crazy amount. Right, which is why this is a trade where well, I'm consolidating to probably, if everything hits right, not necessarily net anything. And maybe this is more so me just not valuing a 2025 20, second. Maybe that's what it is. It's that's not even necessarily the two players. Maybe it's just that I just, that's if I like Laporta enough, it's just not, I don't give a shit to come that's off. That's where it kind of comes back to the last trade where I was like, the second rounder is probably where the needle starts moving a little bit. And the fact that I have McBride, I have McBride over Laporta, but like, I'd be fine with either of them. They probably feel they're the same to me for the yeah. most part. So yep. you add the second in, now I'm like, without a doubt. If this says 2024-205, I probably feel differently. Now, let and me I ask you then. I have to wait another year. I don't know where it's at. Why do you have to wait another year? It's 2025. The no, moment. you don't. Why can't I, I mean, move that to somebody else? You don't have to make the pick. You can move it for somebody else. That's the biggest thing. Is I think I look at the value and not necessarily that I have to wait till 2025 to draft, that I could find someone else that wants a second round pick and try to move it to them. So that's why I'll, I'll just in process in a tight end position where they're both like, to me, supremely talented and could score high end points for my team. Mm -hmm. I want the extra pieces Let me ask by you, a mile. If we, if, if this was like Trey McBride and Deontay Johnson for Laporta, what do you feel now? Trey McBride again, not close. It's it better, but it's, it's not, it's still not an, I don't know. It's, okay. it's better, but I still don't feel like. I think let's you rephrase. can move the second and third for a yeah. For yeah. A I, I hear what you're trying to do. Let's it, rephrase. What would what would you need specifically for you to move to make this trade to go from Laporta down to McBride? What I would think that you extra need piece to know that that's a mid to early second though? Is that what you yeah, that's really what I want. That's what I want. Tell me what you want, man. Okay. And, right. and and you know what? Part of that and part of what we're talking about is probably just to we have guys in Dynasty that we just rock with, and at the end of the day, sometimes it's gonna. <laughs> Costs a little bit more to come off your guy, right? Yeah, 100%. Sure. Uh, yeah, that's a go get your guy. Go get your guy. I get it. I think that might just be what it is. That's fair. All right. Let's talk about, I mean, Bryce Young, someone's guy out there at this point. This is a 10 team super flex, half PPR trade between the dipshit Dugs and Billy Weiser. <laughs> dipshit Dugs gets Bryce Young and the 105 for the 103. Yeah, and I, I nominated this trade actually, and I, I wanted to hear your guys' thoughts because. We talked about it in the office here the other day. This is before I pulled the screenshot before the Canales hire, but it just felt like Bryce Young's price was so low. And to me, this is insane that you can get a quarterback like Bryce Young for that type of a price tag. So I'm interested to hear your guys' thoughts on this and kind of see the take you have. So I'll go, I'll go this way. Like if, if you go to keeptradecut.com, 
<clears throat> based on redrafting Bryce Young's rookie class, he comes off the board at like the 204-ish right now. Like that's his value. Crazy. Wh- yeah, insane. Mm-hmm. But I, there's not a ton that I could argue against, to be honest with you. So if you look at it from a market value standpoint, you're looking at the 204 and the 105 for the 103, which is I think is probably – about the right price. You might even need to pay up a little bit more because everyone knows by the time you get to your rookie drafts, everyone knows the difference between the 105 and 103. They know who's going where. Yeah. You know at the 103, you're getting one of the top QBs or Marvin Harrison. You know at the 105, you're a break off of that. You know, yeah. and you might say like Malik Neighbors and Marv, let's grow up there. You know, you're not getting one of those top four guys. So there's a clear tier break there and that's what you're paying for. Yeah. And I think it comes down to how do you like do you think that 204 evaluation on Bryce Young is appropriate? I would say it's probably low, way low. It's it's probably low, but like there's no doubt that you are rolling the dice a little bit here. Yeah, mm-hmm. is time. is Bryce Young enough to make you go from? Let's just put names. Let's just throw names out there, right? What? Caleb Williams, Marvin Harrison, and then let's say you're looking at 103, maybe neighbors, Jaden Daniels, Drake May. <clears throat> well, I, so I actually think I, I'll just throw this in there real quick. We didn't have context on derailed my all those. whole train. Good. No, go ahead. You can flee. <laughs> no, you're good. You're no, good. I, I'm, I, I can yeah. wait. Yeah. All right. So I'm, I, I wanted to do the right. exercise because you have Daniels, Neighbors, May. So then you're forfeiting your pick at that bunch and taking the last available of that bunch, probably at the 105. But you get Bryce Young thrown on top of that. Is that risk worth it in a deal like this to you, especially <laughs> I, in a super flex league? Well, the reason I was going to cut you off, but I'll let you finish, is because in, <laughs> it, we, we have context here. If that says 12 team, I definitely am more on board with what you're saying because it's 10 team. This is where I talk about, like, understanding your league and dynamics. Bryce Young is a guy that's very polarizing and trending the wrong way, and the, the situation needs a lot of help for him to be a difference maker. There's not a lot of scarcity at the quarterback position, actually, in super flexing. So, like, that 103 and what really moves the needle a lot of times in 10-team leagues isn't necessarily quarterbacks that aren't hammers like yep. Bryce Young. It's that 103, going from 105 to 103, might give me my only chance to get – Marvin Harrison Jr., Romo Dunze, or uh, Malik Neighbors. And that 105, you may be looking at either taking what's there at quarterback that you don't need, and in 10-team, you can end up having three, four quarterbacks and not have one that actually is a good starter. Yeah, my, my, uh, my question is to you, I guess, like 10-team league, the top 20 quarterbacks are getting started. Like, How confident are you that Bryce Jones be a top 20 fantasy quarterback this year? Nada. Scale of 1 to 10, I'd – Zero. Say somewhere between six and seven, six and a half. Really? You're, con- you're that confident that he's that he be. can be top twenty this year? Really? Yeah. You so so you're more confident he's inside the top twenty than out of the top twenty. Yeah. <clears throat> Interesting. Yeah. I would. Yeah. Like I don't think I. But I know. There. I know. What, I'm, what I'm, makes I'm, you say that? I'm I just, just curious. know. I, I know I'm out on a limb because a lot of people don't think that way, but I do believe that the market has gotten far too low on Bryce Young. Right. I think the, especially now knowing what we know with Dave Canales being hired over there, I do believe that. He's shown in the past that he can help quarterbacks develop. I know that their cap space situation is a situation where they can go and add another receiver there or just add some more additional help. And I know that they were pretty banged up on the offensive line last year. You come back, you get a little bit healthier. Year two could look better. Um, so oh. I, And plus everything he put on tape for us there in college. Like we can't discredit that after one year. I know obviously we need to see him do it in the pros, but I'm not willing to write him off at this point right now just based off of a shitty situation that he was thrown into as a rookie. How, how are Buddy's hands? Bryce Young's hands? No, the coach coming over. Can he catch? Is he going to like who's who's going to make plays for Bryce Young? The system can be whatever it is, but that's something they, that they, they can don't go have, figure they out. Don't have that's what I'm saying. They can go figure that out right now. They, how? They, they don't can, have a first round like, pick. I, I do think it's a mistake. They have that, hella cap space. The dynasty people, they'll probably add somebody. Yeah. I do think it's a mistake that dynasty people make is being like, or just in general, fantasy football is like, situation, you know, it has to kind of get better, but it's like, it also can just like barely improve. And he can go from quarterback 29 to quarterback 27 and still be fucking useless for this year. My point is. Not to discredit, they're gonna they're gonna try to do something to address the situation. I'm not yeah. acting like they don't want to dread. They don't they don't have they have cap space, but who's really going to sign in Carolina to play for that team? Who who are they gonna get in the draft? They don't have a first round pick. There's a situation where where they address their receiving corps and their offensive line really is no different than what it was this year, they or very very mildly up. They don't have a, f- a first round pick, and I I don't want to sit here and just turn this into me defending Bryce Young for the next thirty minutes. But what it is is like they do have a early second round pick. We talked sure, about guys, yeah. you know, in a video previously where it's like they can get Brian Thomas Jr. in the early second. They Definitely. can get a Troy Franklin. They can get things like that. So say they add a piece like that. They know they need weapons for Bryce Young. They add a piece like that, and maybe 
They had a piece like that. And, yeah, so they add a piece like that in the draft. Troy Franklin, Brian Thomas, and maybe they go get a vet like Mike Evans or they get a T. Higgins or something like that in a free agency. All of a sudden, we're looking at this very differently in Carolina. I got a question. Picture this. No, you. No, you. Brian. Hank. Bri- Brian Young. Bryce Young. I'm so disrespectful to him already. I forgot his fucking name. Bryce Young. I tell you that he has the career of Ryan Tannehill. Mm-hmm. Mm. Right? Not a ton of upside. Okay. A few good years, but a starting quarterback Solid-ish, that yeah. you might be able to use as your QB2 for a bunch of time, which I don't think right now is like kind of out of the range of outcomes the way he played in his rookie year. Now, how do you feel about this trade? I still think you're I getting like a 22, same. 23 year old Ryan Tannehill. Yeah. I mean, I'm still going to get multiple years of production out of him. I think <clears throat> that's what you're wanting out of these picks. So I still get the pick. I just moved back two slots. I can still take a Romo Dunze, a Malik Neighbors, a something like that if I. You know, I, I just don't get my first choice of the bunch, but I still get one of them, and not I get a Bryce Young. I, I'm still, I not, think I'm still taking that side of the deal. Not necessarily in 10 team, though, because in 10 team, the quarterbacks may not go as high because people don't need quarterbacks. They don't reach for – like a lot of teams are actually sitting on three quarterbacks. If you just think right. about how it spreads out, if right. every team in 10 team had three quarterbacks, that's at 30. Right. So, like, there's not necessarily – Well, the, that, that the could need. be the, the part where, like, you trade for the 105, and then it goes – what uh, if that was Drake May? What, what if you had Bryce Young and Drake May? Right, exactly. Like, that's a little bit I think problematic. I still, what would you, what would you I, think no, about No, no, I don't, I don't think – I mean, I could see why you say that's problematic. I still feel the same way, and that's because at that point, I'm buying an asset in Bryce Young. I'm buying an asset in Drake May or whoever you want to call it, Jaden Daniels, whatever it is. And this is an asset that I believe is going to improve gotcha. in value. And so that's the bet that I'm making here is not that – I bet that Bryce Young is going to be a goddamn superstar. I'm betting that he is going to increase in value more than where he's at right now. And whether it be a month from now, two months from now, a year from now, I'm going to be able to trade Bryce Young or the rookie that I'm taking at 105 for more than I paid today. So you're taking the Bryce Young side? Yes. What are you taking? I'm taking the 103. I will say if this is a 12 team, it's a smash on the Bryce Young side. But the 10 team changes it dramatically for me. It it does change it a lot. I think I ultimately would probably, probably lean – with the Bryce Young side, just because the picks are literally two picks away. Right. As soon as you get to, like, the 106, I'm, I might be out there. 107, out there. But the 105, yeah. you are still getting, like, a premium player with the hopes that, like, maybe Jaden Daniels goes before you so you can get, you know, uh, Marv or Malik. And, yeah. and, I mean, there's still a scenario, I will admit, like, I take the 103 here in this format, just knowing the format. But even let's say that the you, want, you were going to force receiver. Like, who's to say Brian Thomas in – uh, Roma Dunze really are guaranteed to be different players. And Brian Thomas yeah. couldn't be a we better player than Roma Dunze. Yeah. So yeah. you and could just be getting the extra asset and taking the better side. And another name I, I just think I would rather have the up tier to receiver right. here. And another format. name we didn't even throw in is like somebody that we didn't even think of as an option is like Brock Bowers. What if his situation is sure. fantastic? Yeah, there's all, there's all kinds that. of scenarios, no doubt. Let's move to another trade. we got a 12-team super flex PPR, but tight end Spicy. premium. We've it's got a, It's Justin. a full tight end premium, so a full – Two points for that tight okay, end. Okay, so two point PPR for running backs, wide receivers, and then two yep. for tight end premium. Justin Jefferson, Darnell Mooney, a fifth, a fourth, irrelevant. 2024, 108, and Jalen Hurts. Yeah. Mm. Okay, Spicy. so yeah. for me, this is extremely easy. Which because side? on the Hurts side. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I get because it. I look at the startup values of those two. And Jalen Hurts is probably going above Justin Jefferson. Yep. He, and he is an ADP still right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then you're adding the – even if you like Jefferson over it, the 108 for me, like they're – Hurts and Jefferson in a startup draft are so fucking close in, in where they're going to go and what their value is. The 108 – 108 Darnell trumps Mooney. Darnell Mooney of that fifth, fourth, 100, 100 more fourth-round picks yeah. a million times over. So breaking it down piece by piece, the top two cancel each other out, 108 over those other pieces is so easy. Yeah. This is – literally fade the noise and like what Nick was talking about in the trade a couple ago. So like Justin Jefferson's dope. And if you said your build, you could afford to get rid of a quarterback in 12 team to get Justin Jefferson. And you're telling me it's just hurts for Jefferson straight up. And you wanted to make that trade fine. Straight up. 108. Just think 108 or Darnell Mooney, a fourth and a fifth. Come on, man. Come on. And I, that's 108 why and 12 team is ridiculously valuable. That's yeah. why I like this and I wanted to talk about it because I think. And super flex side and premium because that makes all four positions right. valuable. And, and that's why I like it and why I wanted to talk about it because I think it is exactly what you're saying. Like there's a clear 
discrepancy right now between how we are publicly viewing Jalen Hurts negatively, right, and what he's actually produced for your fantasy football teams and really what the range of outcomes is for Jalen Hurts. Like, do any of us foresee Jalen Hurts not being the starter next year? It's impossible. No. Do any he's of us see him not? He's got a $250 million bag. Do we see him not being Man, a top? Shout out to Sean Watson, though. <laughs> right. Do we see him not being a top five fantasy tight end next year? Go based look at off his of points per game, no. Go yeah. look at his game logs. He's even when they were one and six down the stretch, he was a top ten finisher every week but one. Yeah. And it, that's his floor. That's yeah. when they were playing bad. Yeah, he's and awesome. And he's locked up for f- the future. And that's why I like it because it, it shows that there are opportunities out here. And, and maybe you want to say this is a bad trade, but also I think it shows that there are opportunities when you do have the outside noise. Like you said, fade the noise. But there are opportunities to buy into negative narratives or stereotypes that we're seeing. Hell, we just saw that happen with, I think, Dak Prescott and the Cowboys. Like, he just had such a great season. Now everybody's like, Dak sucks. We don't want him. It's the same thing. The other thing with, like, when you talk about Dynasty being a stock market, it's so true. Every player between the ages, like, 23 and 27 always end up getting back to the value point. Wherever you are in that lifespan, they might dip, they might go up, but they're going to get back to where it was at some point or another. No matter how much... If you ever actually... I don't know if you guys invest in stocks. Okay, so like really, if you don't touch the stock and it goes up or down, it always ends up getting back to whatever the money is. It's very hard to believe that while you're in the middle of a free fall or sell it while it's going up because it is going to come back down eventually other than like the blue chip stocks, the Mahomes is the apples, whatever. Yeah. Every 90% of player values, 90% of stocks are going to end up being back to normal, normalized over some point of their career. Yep. It, and I think the other thing too, when you when you're trading away like for Maddie uh, JH six, when you have when people are um, eager to acquire your like really highly valuable pieces, if you can feel that they're eager, a lot of times you can get them to overpay for them. And yep. I almost would guarantee that's what happened here because he was worried about Jalen Hurts. Yeah, Jefferson's also one of those polarizing guys where it's like you feel like he you, anyone will drop the bag for him, you know, and overpay. Yeah, I mean yep. he's, he's fucking <laughs> worth it. All right. Andrew, yes, sir. Ooh, you snuck one in here. You thought we wasn't going to catch that. I snuck one in so here. So another 10-teamer, super flex, okay. full PPR, but a tight end premium. You got JT, yep. James Cook, third, and a second. Yeah, so to give you a, a little bit more context about timeline when this was made, because you said, you know, bring, bring a trade you were happy with last year or, or a trade that you didn't like last year. This was right at that time when Jonathan Taylor was – not playing for the Colts. He was out with the ankle injury, and there was a so lot like of – the first four weeks of the season? Yeah, and okay. it, it was like people were like, ah, is JT going to get the contract extension? Is he going to come back and play, blah, blah, blah? Yep. I took the gamble. I said, let me go buy Jonathan Taylor. And I think it's interesting because at the time, I felt like I got away with a highway robbery. Yeah. But then James Cook went out through the year, and he looked really good. That second-round pick, for context, that ended up being the champion of the league. So okay. it's the 210. 210. 210. 210. It's a 10 so team. Yeah. And then that third, it is what it is, right? You just throw it in. Yep. But I, I'm interested to hear your guys' thoughts because as the year progressed, James Cook looked good. How do you feel about the Jonathan Taylor in a nah, late I, I think it's a smash win for you because when I look at – I look at running backs in Dynasty mm-hmm. as almost outside of the top high-end ones that secure the second contract that are built 215 to 220 that have the athleticism, college production, et cetera, every other one indispensable. James Cook could have one more peak year. But, like, I'm not banking on anything more than that. So any of them that fall within that, like, undersized or unlikely to get second contract or bad draft capital, more than likely will never have more than, like, a two-year relevant peak. And that's what what I do. That's really how I go about trading is I look for those blue-chip stocks, like you said, those really good players that we can bank on. We know they're good. And I look for those negative narrative dips, the chances to get in there and get a little bit of value on them long term. Yeah, I probably wasn't going to be able to have Jonathan Taylor play in my lineup for another three or four weeks. We didn't really know if he was going to get a contract extension at the time. Yeah. It was a gamble I was willing to make. There's a little bit I felt of risk, like but he's like too good of a player for them not to have bought in on Exactly. Him. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but th- this honestly, as a 10 team, is a smash to me. Like in a 10 team league, it's really. Because you want those high upside. You really want to get yeah. studs. It, it really becomes about differentiating your team from the rest of the league. I. In a 12 team, I think that would be a, a lot more debatable. In the 10 team, I'm like, I'm, I'll, I'll take that risk for Jonathan Taylor. I'm, I'm with you. Hank? Yes, sir. I think, yeah, I think that was a huge dub. Anytime you're like getting a blue chip player and you don't, you're not like, oh, am I overpaying here? Like, there's no way you look at a James Cook and a second round pick and being like, oh, I'm overpaying here. If you're getting the, the big time player there, I think it's a dub. Yeah. And I, sure. I knew this is, it goes back into knowing your league too. Like, I knew that manager was a little bit panicky on Jonathan Taylor and, you just have the ability to go in and kind of give him a couple things that he likes and l- come out with 
some risk. Yeah, you take some risk, but it's worth it in the end. I thought you said you learned from getting over on your league mates. Look, man, <laughs> still got to get some dubs when you can get them. Uh, let's move to another trade that I thought was kind of interesting, and I think we just did a Matty uh, J.H. trade, but he's, he's making moves. He's all over the fucking place. He's bike. I'm he got DJ Moore. He gave up Jordan Addison and a third. Now, on the surface, really easy to look at this and be like, DJ Moore side killed. I also think this might have been earlier in the year. I don't remember if I wrote down the context for it. So DJ Moore and Jordan Addison. Now, Jordan, uh, DJ Moore obviously just had a career year, so it's very easy to look at him. Jordan Addison just had a really, really solid rookie year. So in a year's time from now, we could be looking at two ships passing in the night where DJ Moore, it's like, okay, now he's 28 or whatever, and maybe he had 1,000 yards, 1,100 yards. Now's the time to get off of him. And Jordan Addison's obviously very young, rookie, polarizing prospect coming out, had a great year with Jefferson. We don't know what the quarterback situation is necessarily going to be like there. And I would definitely take the DJ Moore side in this trade, I think, just straight up right now. But what what are your guys' opinions on, like, I, I wouldn't say this is a lateral move, right? Because I agree with you. Like, if someone offers me a move where it's, like, wide receiver for wide receiver in the same boat or whatever, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not making the move just because right. it's stupid. Yep. But I don't think these are just straight lateral because one is clearly vet, one is clearly young. I was going to say, I think this could be a trade that – you could maybe argue Connor uh, 0488 could have tried to squeeze more in the third out, but this could be a trade that's really mutually beneficial. For example, if like the DJ, the person Matty H is getting DJ more, he's in more of a position that he wants to win now. Yep. He knows Jordan Addison has like immense upside, yep. but I'm really, I'm willing to forego that in a third for the chance to chase DJ Moore's production. Now. I think a second would have made the trade way, way more normalized. Yeah. This looks like a trade too that like, <clears throat> Your, the league will be like, oh, that you're you're a dumbass. Like, why would you yeah. trade away DJ Moore? And then a year from now, you look back and be like, oh, my God, you got Addison and a pick for DJ yeah. Moore. And, and that's one of those things, too. Like, if you're rebuilding um, or you're not ready to compete and, you know, you're definitely not even willing or you're not even able to, like, see if you get to the playoffs and see what happens, it's it's harder to move DJ Moore for, like, a lot of liquid draft capital than you think. Like, he's in one of those player ranges where it's not as easy to get out, like, a whole bunch of value. Maybe this was the best thing you could get. Yeah. Going back to, like, the, the startup strategy I was talking about, like, DJ Moore is a guy that I want to draft at value in a startup draft, but you get him at value because people don't want to trade for yeah. him. Exactly. And that's the thing, too, is, like, we you were talking about, like, a year from now you're looking at it and you're like, well, how did you get Jordan Addison and the pick? Because what if a few months from now, what if Chicago sticks with Fields, drafts Marvin Harrison Jr., I would say that caps the upside of a DJ Moore, and then all of a sudden it, it looks a little bit different too. So yep. I think it is two teams probably going in different directions, beneficial to both people, and I th- I, I like that trade honestly. Yeah, yeah, if if that was the context, that would I would definitely agree. agree. That's a good trade for both all sides. Right. I want to rip one last final last send off trade here, and make sure if you've been watching up to this point that you go hit the button that looks like this down below. Subscribe to the channel. Go put the D in it, and make sure we are subscribed to both. Adam and Andrew's channel, also linked down below. Throw my some D's on it. My man's no, Dylan, you. speaking of D's, said, Dynasty trade from today. My team got Monty to pair at running back with ETN. Gibbs wanted to own the Lions wide, uh, running back room. I have Adams, Higgins, and Garrett at wide receiver. Other team, wide receiver two is Chark, full PPR. Would love to know y'all thoughts. Dynasty, you're So basically he was saying the other team had a point at wide receiver two. Therefore, I can kind of take advantage of it. He gave up Cup. He gave up Deontay Johnson. He gave up the 108 for David Montgomery. Uh, just off rip, and we can dissect it a little bit more. Just off rip, I don't understand. I don't value going and getting. You said he wanted to go get the Lions running back room. I don't understand why you want to go get the handcuff to your Gibbs because I would assume we would all assume that next year we like Gibbs more than we like Monty. Sure. I mean, when you handcuff, though, it's the, the idea that if – Gibbs isn't there, Monty's the workload, right? So the other thing to consider here too is obviously knowing the upcoming draft, you're getting another you're you're tearing up there from the eight to the five for sure. You're getting mm-hmm. one of those, you know, top three quarterbacks or Malik or Marvin Harrison, <coughs> something. So I feel good about that. I do not know that I like Monty over Cup and Deontay. Yeah. So you got he says he has Adams, Higgins, and Garrett Wilson at wide receiver. Like I understand right now wanting to try to move Cooper Cup and Deontay Johnson. I I just would say while I know what you're doing, it feels a little rich from 108 to 105, personally. That's and, I, and, I, and I know there's a, there, for me, there's a tear break in the 24 class at 105 to 108, but I don't know that I would have, this is the way I would have liked to um, ex- basically got off of Cooper Cup and Deontay. Yeah. It feels like. And that's exactly how I feel with it, too. It almost feels like, do you, do you almost feel like we could have <clears throat> probably got this deal done if you take Deontay out and just put a little bit of a worse wide receiver in there? You feel like that we could still get that deal done? I mean, 
Dude, what, which sides do you guys like here? For me, yeah, you. I, I think I'm going with the 108 Deontay Cooper Cup side. Can I say neither? Neither. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm, These assets aren't the <laughs> most enticing assets. It's ever. a little tough because there's part of me that's still like, I'm about to get another good year at a cup. You know, yeah. there's part of me. And it's almost like if that happens, everything is worth it you ran on away. that side. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even if he finishes like the wide receiver like 11, I still feel great about that side because – I don't know what Demont's upside is in full PPR, and that league is full PPR. So for me, I I feel like I would have needed to tear up in, in the running back spot. The one thing I will say about this, <clears throat> I don't. I was I read this a couple of times. I don't see the context. If this is a twelve team league, the one thing I can understand about going to get Montgomery in that one hundred and five, if you look at it from a lens of the three quarterbacks that we think, as well as neighbors and Marvin Harrison Jr. having all those picks, we talked about startups. If all of those top five picks have a chance to be like almost second round picks, early thirds, and you have a chance to get a quarterback there, I, I, I would understand doing it. It just, it just, the problem is trading Cooper Cup and Deontay Johnson, like I know right now they're basically uh, depressed assets and they're eventually going to pick back up some steam as the season comes around. It just feels like the wrong time to trade away Cup and Johnson. Right, exactly. It's, yeah, you, they're assets you'd want to hold until they get a little more steam and value. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, ultimately, <coughs> I, don't, I don't think it's the worst trade. But I would lean with the cup, Deontay, 108 yep. side. Yep. Same. <clears throat> yeah, but a lot of uh, a lot of moving parts here, which I think yeah. will even itself out by the time the season starts. Probably agreed. If if that ends up not being a quarterback, for example, if that's a neighbors or a receiver, and then it ends up being you know you could get Brian Thomas. Or th- the difference in receiver there may feel good when you draft it, but it may end up not being anything at all. Yeah. Yeah, they're all dart throws, right? There it is. There it is. Hank. All right, so we're probably going to do one of these episodes every few weeks, so make sure you are tapped into the BDGE Discord. Again, link down below. Free to get in there. Free to yap away with us. Uh, We'll be hanging out in there, and them two will be hanging out on their YouTube channel, so make sure you subscribe. Link down below. Yes, sir. All that shit. Yell at us. Tell us what you liked, didn't like of all the videos, man. Let us Give us the feedback. 100%, because these first four videos we did, this will be the fourth of the group podcast setting Uh, We filmed it all in one day. So we just ripped them all at one time. We did not wait for feedback. So the first real feedback will come from you guys as these kind of lay out over the first couple weeks. Let us know what you liked, what you didn't like, what topics you want us to discover discover and and talk about conversationally, all that kind of stuff. But you'll get a bunch of individual content as well. And again, if you're watching on Redraft, go subscribe to the Dynasty channel because that shit will be gone soon. Level up. Bye. Darling.